Hey, peace family. This is Lions Den with another news and commentary. Um, I have some breaking news out of Zimbabwe um, in Africa. Um, remember Monday, they had a, a presidential election results. And it's, been, it's turned out that the, the presidential election has been rigged over there. Obviously, um, and thanks to um, Dr. Mumbai, when I'm about to pl play her, um, play her show, her program, but it shows that the big question is, if it happens in Zimbabwe, will it happen here in the, in the United States of America? So I'm going to go ahead and play um, Dr. Mubai's show, the movie show, and then I'm going to um, give you the rest of my commentary with what's going on in Zimbabwe and will the same situation happen there happen here. So he here it is. Wake up. Wake up, Africa. Your time has come. Open up your eyes and see the sun. Open up your spirit. Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Wake up, Africa. Hello and welcome to Africa Watch on the Dr. Mumbi Show. My name is Dr. Mumbi Seraki. I almost forgot my name. <laughs> That's because, you know, all is not well in Zimbabwe. We had the elections in Zimbabwe on Monday. And um, as the results have been coming out, there's been a lot of unrest and upheaval. And, you know, it's just not a pretty situation. A lot of prophetic voices had been calling on the peoples of the world, on the peoples of the African nation to really, really pray for Zimbabwe, to commit Zimbabwe to prayer because they feared that the outcome that we're seeing now is actually what would happen. And what we're seeing is that, um, you know, I mean, did you expect anything different? Mgangwa, you know, Zanu PF has been declared or is about to be declared the president of the republic of zimbabwe and you know it's just there's so much to be learnt by african nations and by the nations of the world about how to deal with systems you know a lot of us get confused and we think that a system you know we think that the presidency is one person and so by replacing one person you change you can change everything and it's a very very naive thing that we've seen in africa and you know across the world even with guys like trump guys are hating on trump and thinking if you replace Tr you know if you remove trump you you change the system but we have to start looking at these things differently now what happened in zimbabwe is that um you know a few days before guys were already declaring first of all the the opposition leader chamisa he was saying i'm gonna win I know I'm going to win, and if I don't win, the elections are rigged. So already there was that 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 clash. And uh, we saw on Sunday, Mugabe actually declared the elections weren't going to be free and fair. Uh, he, he took the opportunity to hold a press conference and kind of bash you know, his former DP, also saying that he wouldn't be voting for him. <laughs> I swear. You gotta love that 94 year old man. And um, what happened is a few seconds later, they re withdrew all his security and his personnel. Now, we did see Mugabe voting with his wife, but um, what he said had come to pass. And he had actually said, You guys will get rid of me and things will be thick. So. You know, we've seen four decades of brazen and manipulated elections, and the Electoral Commission has been biased towards the ZANU-PF. Now, you know, why even bother to hold the elections if it was going to be rigged to begin with? Because what we saw is that um, last year, Mugabe was replaced. Was it last year or early this year? I mean, I'm forgetting, Mugabe was replaced by um, his deputy. And we saw, you know, and the army's the one who did it. They actually removed him. They gave him back a press, com press statement to read. And they replaced his deputy. And we saw Zimbabweans celebrating and cheering and just, you know, having a heyday, even hugging up on the army personnel, you know, boarding their tanks and, and thanking, you know, the Zimbabwean army for liberating Zimbabwe. But, you know, I think 
think we we always celebrate the liberation too soon you know it's something we saw with colonialism you're celebrating before you're fully free and that is exactly what has happened now replacing um mugabe with magangwa did not mean that zimbabwe would change i mean this is this was the enforcer of zimbabwe's you know of mugabe's rule this was the man who was you know the right hand man of mugabe was he even running the country I mean, or was Mugabe fully in control in the in his 90s? And this is the sad and fatal reality that a lot of Zimbabweans have woken up to. And, um, you know, the sad thing is that the African Union and the South African, um, the SADC, have already they've already endorsed the the sham elections which everyone can see as a sham and that also shows you that africa not only are most of these you know um presidential systems the enemy of the people but even african union is totally useless seriously and i i hate to put it like that but really the african union is not about the people the african union is about the governments it represents and i think we we get naive thinking that the african union is representing you and me now um you know there's all kinds of rumors of ballots being transported by the military uh who had openly stated they would only accept a zanu pf win and in fact there's even evidence that shows that there's an airplane that came from georgia landed <laughs> I don't know, either the night before the elections or the night you know of the elections and um it was not searched there were no protocols it wasn't registered and funny boxes were seen being transferred um you know to offloaded into swift trucks i have no idea what swift trucks are. i don't know if it's a brand or whatever this is actually from a tweet from one of the um reputable journalists on the ground were they ballot papers were they ballot papers well Right now, ZANU PF has been given two thirds of the parliamentary seats, crushing the opposition. And it looks like Mgangwa will be the president of Zimbabwe. What are some of the lessons we can learn from this, guys? Seriously. I'll be letting you know right after this. Welcome back to the Dr. Mumbi Show, Africa Watch. My name is Dr. Mumbi Saraki. A sad state of affairs where literally it looks like allegedly, apparently, the military has endorsed their person. The military has stolen the elections for ZANU-PF. Now, um, you know, it was very naive of people of Zimbabwe. And I, I don't want you guys to catch feelings. I'm really sorry about what is going on. I am praying for Zimbabwe. And I appeal to the nations and the peoples of the world to really pray for Zimbabwe to go through, you know, this, this season um, peacefully and to find a peaceful resolution to what is happening. Uh, now, what we're seeing is that when they removed Mugabe, not only did Mgangwa, his deputy, become president, but a lot of um, military leaders became pseudo-politicians and entered government. So what do you expect, guys? What do you expect? And, you know, of course, the evidence is everywhere that... Um, the election was rigged. Now, what happened is that immediately the day after, from Tuesday, the opposition has actually been celebrating their win, and they've been holding demonstrations in Harare. And what we saw yesterday was um, army personnel. We saw the riot police coming into Harare, but we saw army personnel coming in live with and, and shooting live bullets. In fact, there's a lady who died from a bullet wound in her back. She was actually not even involved in the demonstrations. She had just closed her shop and she was heading to her car and uh, you know the live bullet hit her in the back we live ammunition and you know a lot of people were quick to point out um in zimbabwe that they they were they've had way worse um protests when uh, mugabe was president trying to oust him and way more violent but never did we see the army deployed so who do you think is in control and you know the lessons that can be learned from this as we continue to pray for zimbabwe because i mean now 
they were already declared two thirds majority uh, in parliament. So it's, you know, presidential election, by the time you're probably seeing this, ZANU PF Mgwangwa has probably been announced as president of, you know, of Zimbabwe. But what lessons can we learn? First of all, we must learn as African nations and as nations of the world that if you want to replace a president or if you want to replace a system, it's the entire system. You know, there was so much focus from the opposition on, of Zimbabwe on the presidential seat and on winning the presidential seat and celebrating the presidential seat that they did not protect the parliamentary seats. And you cannot, especially in parliamentary systems, you cannot focus on one guy. One guy is not going to liberate you. One man is not going to do it on his own it has to be a wholesome win and so taking their eyes off the parliamentary seats and concentrating too much on the presidential you know announcement has cost the opposition dearly now of course the opposition but the uh, parliamentary results have already been announced and the opposition is now crying foul and saying you know oh no we you know we totally dispute the parliamentary um results they must be you know they must be revisited and reviewed but i mean because now it's individuals two-thirds flipping that is going to be very complicated um so as african nations as we look to you know as we look to the future because there's so many elections coming up there's a cameroonian election that's happening in october there's the democratic republic of congo's election that's happening in december there's the south african election that's happening next year we really need to smart up we need to recognize who we're up against as african nations and as global nations by the way, this is not just an Africa situation, but you guys can learn from us because we keep messing up. We need to realize that a lot of the presidents currently in power are either Freemasons, they're part of the occult, or they're puppets of the globalists. It's that simple. And the reason ZANU-PF even went through this sham election is because the money has been frozen. And so, you know, the puppet masters, like the UK and stuff, had said, yo, we need you to, we need you to be rubber stamped. We need you to be endorsed somehow so that, you know, you, you have some air of political legitimacy. Because what they're after, they don't even care about what happens in Zimbabwe. What they're after is the money. Zimbabwe is hoping that after this election, what they were hoping for is after this election, they can now say, okay, yeah, I've been elected by my people. Uh, some debt will be canceled off. And then they can now start borrowing again and, you know, filling their coffers and filling their pockets. That's basically what it's about. And that's why this election was held. It was basically to rubber stamp the military, you know, dictatorial regime that was controlling Zimbabwe. So as as young people everywhere we must become more we, we must style up and we must smarten up you know we must realize that getting rid of the current um regimes that completely control and oppress us in so many african nations is about getting rid of the system it's about taking down the system it's not about replacing one person with another and you know i've seen in kenya guys are saying hey People, we better not replace Ruto with Uhuru. And, you know, prophetically, we covered that election. It was messy. It was ugly. Um, we nearly went into a crazy civil war here in Kenya. But what, you know, and I had prophetically said Uhuru would be elected. I got a lot of backlash from that. But why did I say that? And I still stand by that. It's because he must clean the swamp. And I know now I don't want to get into Kenyan politics, but he must clean the swamp. If, if Raila, if the opposition had been elected, this guy's, all the guys who have stolen for the last five years, and they've stolen crazy amounts, close to a trillion shillings or ten billion dollars, would have gone scot free, and we'd have had a new, a new. They'd have been replaced by new thieves. So that's the only reason Uhuru was chosen for such a time as this is to clean the swamp. Either he cleans the swamp, he gets cleaned out by the swamp, or his legacy dies. It's just that simple. There's nothing else. So, but you know, let me not get into Kenya's elections, guys. We must get smart. We must start looking at the system in place, the men behind the throne. It's not enough to replace the figurehead, the, president, the person on the presidential seat, but we must look at the systems. Let's continue praying for Zimbabwe. God bless you. God bless the nation of Zimbabwe. May peace reign supreme over that nation. And may we style up and learn from what is occurring. Mwah. Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up
Okay, fam. Um, you saw what's going on in Zimbabwe. Um, for those of you that don't know African politics, um, the country of Zimbabwe just had an ele this election this past Monday. And, you know, Mugabe's right-hand man, I'll see, I think her pronounce it, um, Zhang Zhang, Zhang Wang. Anyway, um, he won, he will be the next president of Zimbabwe. Um, the, the, it been, um, people in Zimbabwe crying, calling this crying foul. And some starting uprising, riots, because they felt that their elections doesn't count. Basically, we all have to understand, and I'm praying for Zimbabwe as well, right here on Lions Den, um, because basically what we're seeing is that the country of Africa itself, Zimbabwe, who's um, just, I mean, he just basically thought that they got, got over uh, Mugabe, which unfortunately they didn't. Oh, they got rid of the man, but they didn't get rid of his party. And that's the problem. So when you have... A, a guy who's Mugabe's right hand man become the president, then it's gonna be the same old, same old, same old, same old thing. No changes at all, and that's probably why this, um, the the people of Zimbabwe are fed up. They're they're upset about that. But just like Doctor Mumbai said, you just can't get rid of just one man. You just gotta you get, get you gotta get rid of the entire parliament. So the so Zimbabwe's um party is already, I think, two-thirds or three-fourths of the parliament, parliament. So what we're seeing is that just because you get rid of Mugabe doesn't necessarily mean that the party will be gone. It's just you can just get rid of one man. But you, but it's already been rigged. This is, you, you hear what Dr. Mumbi said. It's already been rigged since day one because you got people out of, from not even from Africa, went to Zimbabwe and had these paper ballots and basically, you see what happened there. Now, what does this have to do with the United States? It's that simple. We have a similar situation here. Um, and then you ha then, see, this is important. This is why midterm elections this year is important. 2020 um, in the next three years is important. Because obviously, what we're seeing is that I mean, Trump called it as a hostile takeover. It's like in companies you have hostile takeover. Now you got hostile takeover in elections. Obviously, you see, you know, people who really are against Trump. And I'm going to be honest with you. There's some people right now are against Trump or running. The biggest concern is will people turn out to vote? Will Even if we are voting, will it count? Because again, we, I mean, I mean, let's let's go, let's take a step back of what happened in 2016. Let's take a step back with that. You know, between the primary Democratic primary elections between Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders, as you know, that the, it, and like I said, be, I mean, Hillary Clinton won the Democratic primaries. However, there's been there's been crying foul on that because you know people you know at that time. So people are really supporting the Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders was on the rise, and Bernie Sanders, some of the states Bernie Sanders could have won. And basically, it turns out that he, he he almost did win. You got states like Arizona. You see the long lines, and, and, some, and the polls closed. You see the longer lines there. Some, half of them didn't even vote. You see states like New York. Same situation. They closed down some of the voting voting polls in Brooklyn. Um, then you went to California. Um, there's some voting machine issues, ballots issues there. So the thing of it is, is that you know, and that's why Hillary Clinton won, and that's why people who are fed up with with um, with rig elections, basically, I mean, I, I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but when they fed up with these rig ballots or these rigged elections, then the people that the, the people the um Democratic Party who um the Democratic establishment who endorsed Hillary Clinton facing and this is why we got Donald Trump today. This is why. Because people don't want to vote for and and people will say, well, if you vote for the third party, you're gonna vote for Trump anyway. 
But the, the, the point I'm making is this, that we have a similar situation here in the United States than it, they are in Zimbabwe. And it, and again, and just, and I agree with you. It's just, I mean, like I said, you got the Supreme Court and guess what? It's going to be conservative because I think, believe, I believe they're going to confirm that Supreme Court Justice Trump appointed. You got a conservative, you got a conservative Supreme Court. You got a conservative Senate and the House, depending on this year's election. But so far, I'm talking about before the midterm elections. You got conservative Supreme Court. You got the conservative um, Senate, the House, and now you got the conservative president. And we got, and then we have Donald Trump. Basically, what we're seeing is that people are fed up in Zimbabwe. Um, like, because the guy who's right-hand man is uh, Mugabe, you know, pe people want change. They don't want another person like Mugabe or who's a party affiliate with Mugabe. But again, as you can see, the election in Zimbabwe was rigged. And we got another guy, another puppet, um, thinking that it was a change, but it really wasn't a change. They, they've they been rigged the election. They try to, um, try to mess with people's ballots, paper ballots. And the big question is, if it happens in Zimbabwe, will it happen in the United States? I um, feel like, and it's been proven that it could happen here. And the Supreme Court already basically upheld in the state of Ohio, they already upheld the voting purges in Ohio. Then you got what's going on in North Carolina when you, when basically the gerrymandering districts, which means they created um, created counties that let Republicans vote their way and get Democrats on another county, which is which grows Republican gerrymandering districts. In in um in North Carolina, then you had it again in Texas. See, this is the problem, right? Because they knew the Republicans want to keep their power. They want to keep their. They want to remain in power, and they do. They do whatever it takes to keep it. And this is the perfect example of it. Thanks to the Supreme Court upheld held in Ohio with the voter purges, along with the North Carolina decided to increase their gerrymandering. In, in counties there, and then the same thing with Texas trying to suppress the vote there. And you heard what Donald Trump said. I, I did a video, um, I did a video yesterday. Donald Trump said they won't voter ID laws. In, er, in all across the country, they won't vote voter ID. They want every American person with voter ID laws, with voter ID. Some people say there's not a problem out of you, these Joe, is voter, um, show their ID to vote. But here's one problem with that: some people who couldn't who couldn't afford buying a voter ID, buy, buy, buy an ID, a state ID. Some people couldn't afford it, may not even vote. So they cutting down the people that couldn't afford it, that couldn't afford buying an, an a state ID or a driver's license. That's gonna cut down all people that's gonna vote if either this year's midterm elections or in 2020 presidential elections. And again, this is concerning because a lot of people don't have the people. It's, it's some in the elderly couldn't even afford buying a, a driver's license or a state official state ID. Now, if they decided to pass the voter ID laws in every state, my advice to the people is to go ahead and get your um get, get your get your state ID now. Um, get your new driver's license now because what 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 they're trying to do. It's cutting down people. They know that if African Americans or if Latino Americans come out and vote, their party will they definitely will lose. So that's why they trying what they're trying to do is trying to do the same thing like they're doing in, in Zimbabwe right now. So people, this is why I say I want this is a very important this is this election is very important. I'm talking about the midterms. Because this is about Senate, House races, up for grabs. Um you got Governorships up for grabs. You got mayors, um, sheriffs. This is not just about the president of the United States. It's about local politics. It's about local politicians. You got governorships. You got um, sheriffs. You got um, 
gov I mean, yeah, governorship, sheriffs. You got state senate seats, state house seats up for grabs. And this is is going to see who's going to who's, who's going to change turn the tides. And then on top of that, you got all the other house and senate seats that probably going to switch around. However, this is why I said people just need to be careful. Um, and obviously, they say they're going to do paper ballots because they're, they're concerned about their voting machines might not count. It's so much stuff is going on, ladies and gentlemen, that we as a people need to wake up. You don't want the one thing you don't want to happen is happen in another Zimbabwe. We, we, here in the United States, we don't want, want another Zimbabwe here. When people when people put in rig elections or rig ballots day before the election day and, and saying, hey, call it a winner. And the people said, well, Russia may hack our elections and blah, blah, blah. But. To be completely honest, it may complete. Uh, be completely not. I, I mean, completely honest. I'm sorry. Completely honest. You know, Russia, it ain't the only country that can uh, in, uh, intimidate our elections or manipulate our elections. We do the same thing to other countries: France, Germany, England, Canadians. Everybody do try to figure out manipulate people in other countries with their elections. But my point is this, ladies and gentlemen, this is a, this is a this is an ugly situation in Zimbabwe. It really is, and obviously, uh, unless I mean, the question everybody. I mean, my concern is, will it happen here? There's a possibility because of, of the Supreme Court ruling of upheld,ing you know, the voter purges in Ohio and re re gerrymandering districts in North Carolina and in Texas. So yes. This is in this is this is could happen here because because of, because of what's going on. So you know what? Let's pray for Zimbabwe today, because they've been through a, another rig election, another crisis down there, and we're just gonna pray for them, pray for the people there, and hopefully they get there. Hopefully they get it together. But it's not just one man; it's the entire system, like Doctor Mumbi says, and. Let let us be a lesson learned that if it happens in Zimbabwe, it's going to happen here in the United States as well. Well, let me let well let me know what you think about this video. Share this video. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Subscribe to my reaction channel. And subscribe to my Black Junction channel for all the news and commentary. With that being said, this is Lions Den signing off. Deuces.